And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. Why do I and why do atheists hate God? Why do I hate God? Well, why do atheists hate God? Pardon my offensive exterior, let's go ahead and talk about 10 things I hate about God. I hate the Christian God, the Judeo-Christian God of the Bible. Jacqueline Glenn hates God. Why do I hate God? I would tell him to God him. I hate you, you son of a <laughs> God! The Bible is absolute bullshit! Complete and thorough! Come absolute bullshit written by people who had no idea what they're talking about. Stop that belief to connect this can be! Oh, oh, oh! Okay. Oh, yeah. Atheists like to generalize, calling anyone who does not believe in God an atheist. This is stupid, and an example of how illogical they are. Atheism is a label. They use it to define who they are and what they believe. If you ask a person, tell me about yourself, they will obviously tell you something that they like doing, not something that they don't. Those who label themselves as atheists are pure psychopaths. Look at how they chase down subjects that trigger them. They are constantly unhinged and on Christian channels commenting over and over and over, chasing down any subject that emotionally upsets them or that goes against their belief of atheism. They walk around with a chip on their shoulder, mad at the world, and take it out on any group of people that don't think the way that they do. I want you to think about people who like to call themselves an atheist. Who needs to define themselves by what they don't believe in? It's nonsense, and they know it deep down. Being pathologically upset about something that they claim doesn't exist, their vendetta is against God, no matter what they say. This is proof atheists have huge mental issues. Look at how they defend their non-belief. Look at how they argue for it. Just watch the comment section after they watch this and see how facts and reality hurt them so much. Watch how they have to defend their lack of belief. What kind of horrible mental skills do they think we have to not notice this? And why let them get away with such stupidity all the time? Why let them verbally attack you like the cowardly keyboard warriors they are? Also, when you dare speak up in defense, they can play the victim card and cry and moan, saying, You're not a real Christian because Christians can't be mean! It's a pathetic trap so they can walk all over you and act bold for the first time in their life. No alpha male would ever act like this. This is why they do. They are just triggered snowflake losers who hate themselves and take it out on everyone else. Their insecurities roll over in everything they do, and they blame God for their shortcomings and problems in life. But they cannot do anything to God, so they take it out on God's people, because it's all they can do. This is why they act the way they do towards us. But I want you to know that atheism is devoid of all the important answers, and void of all hope. This is why they often kill themselves and are highly medicated and pathologically upset all the time. They are stuck on hating God. That is why they try to discredit us at any chance they can get by saying stupid things like, you can't prove that God exists in any way, yet they know damn well the Bible describes God as a spirit. Let's see what the Webster Dictionary definition is for spirit. Oh look, a life-giving force derived from Latin spiritus, which literally means breath or a being such as a ghost whose existence cannot be explained by the known laws of nature, thus proving the insincerity of an atheist who want us theists to prove a spaghetti monster type god that lives in the clouds or something. Notice god is nothing at all like the straw man spaghetti monster argument that insincere, pathetic, cowardly atheists try to present to back up their own definition of a god because they cannot disprove the true concept of god in its true context. 
Some will claim they don't even know what God is, yet they will argue against it anyway. That's how angry and dumb they are. It's like saying something as stupid as, I don't know anything about math, but I'll tell you why it's wrong. Ignorant to their core with not a shred of decency in them. I'm not talking about agnostic people here. I'm talking about people that define themselves and go by atheists. That's how they define their life. That's how they define who they are. Regardless, let's move on. Even though atheists deny it, atheism is a religion, and dictionaries still define atheism as a belief that there is no God. Atheists get all upset about this, even though they cannot prove this, so they will try to manipulate the definition of it, telling others, atheism is just a lack of belief, when we all know that it is still a belief, not a lack of one, and they think that there is no God. Why is there a push by atheists to redefine the definition of atheism? The advantage of this new definition is that it relieves the atheist of the burden of proof. Regardless, atheism has much in common with the reality of what is commonly called a religion. A common attempt by an atheist is to associate themselves with a worldview that has no moral values to defend, while at the same time saying, I believe that there is no God. Because atheism is actually defined as a belief and not lack of one, hence the need for a word. And it's why many atheists are very active in defending their supposed lack of belief, making atheism a belief system logically. What atheists lack is being honest about what atheism belief really means, a godless, self-serving, morally selective religion on personal opinion based around using Darwinism as their Bible. When debating an atheist, it is not uncommon to arrive at the point in the debate where an atheist will use the definition of atheism as some form of shield from whatever argument they're trying to make or evade. Often, atheists will have certain beliefs regarding atheism, and when these beliefs are questioned, such as the belief that science or evolution and atheism are linked, or that atheism is an outcome of refuted evidence, these beliefs are then shielded behind the definition of atheism, as atheists feign the notion that these beliefs require no substantiation because atheism is defined as merely the lack of belief in God and not a claim. What is helpful to understand is how atheism is defined in the English language. Most atheists will cherry pick a certain definition of atheism and use just that, particularly if atheism is defined as a lack of belief. Atheists will peddle this definition and hide behind it almost down the line. Here's the actual dictionary definitions of atheism. The belief that God doesn't exist. The doctrine or belief that there is no God. Someone who does not believe that God exists. Someone who believes that God does not exist. The belief that there is no God. The belief that God does not exist. The, the belief that there is no God. Or it gets even worse in some of these, the denial of the existence of God or gods. The denial of the existence of God or gods. Are you getting the point so far? We know that atheists are pushing to have all of these changed, of course, but as you can see, even if they can muster up a definition somewhere else, they have to ignore the vast majority of actual definitions and latch on to something that can help them in an argument. It's a cowardly guard they put up to divert any real responsibility, while at the same time having to use it as a label. Obviously nobody needs to label themselves by what they don't believe in. That's just retarded. Even according to the Encyclopedia of Philosophy, atheism is not simply a lack of belief in God. Atheism is the affirmation that there is no God. If a person simply lacks a belief, they are not an atheist, regardless of what they tell you, of course. Atheist. The term atheist describes a person who does not believe that God or a divine being exists. It's a belief, and that's why it is a belief, because it's required to believe this, because you have no actual evidence for it. Atheists try to mix two different definitions together deceptively to try to make it seem like they have no choice in the actual matter, and that it doesn't require a belief. This is called equivocation. This is why I am clear to define the actual dictionary term, and not some new made-up definition that they gave themselves or decided upon by moving the goalposts because it's a personal agenda or opinion. Atheists are the epitome of rejecting facts and rewriting what they want to believe to help them sleep at night, rationalizing the whole way through. Your own definition does not reign supreme, and going into any epistemic pursuit with honesty and integrity would be to understand the definition and descriptions of atheism. Fact. The word is not broken down as a theism. That's a layman's understanding. 
The true breakdown of atheism is broken down as atheosism. That is the etymological breakdown. Atheos meaning without God, and ism meaning belief. Put the two together, it means belief without God, not lack of belief in God. The person who does not collect stamps certainly is not called a non-stamp collector, nor can they now be grouped with other taxidermists or mail deliverers or police officers who are non-stamp collectors. That's just stupid. An atheist is just another person who has a faith-based belief that there is no God and use the label so they can all band together in this belief. That is why they form churches and groups and meetups and have popular atheist gurus that they all follow. All beliefs are referred to as an ism. Merriam-Webster put its definition of ism in two ways. One, a distinctive doctrine cause or theory, and two, an oppressive and especially discriminatory attitude or belief. Kent Hovind often says that atheism is a religion. People freak out about this, but let's figure out from his perspective why he would say something like this. If I were to ask an atheist, are you a Christian, Jew, Hindu, or Buddhist? They would reply, no, I'm an atheist. And that, in turn, suggests that atheism is analogous to Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, and Hinduism. Another hallmark of a belief system is that it attracts others to believe in it as well. On a basic level, they say, there is no God, which is not provable, thus faith is required. In other words, atheism too can be seen as a religion. Here is one such example of how atheists try to convert others. In 2007, World Net Daily featured a column by Chuck Knorr concerning atheism and the internet which declared, Atheists are making a concerted effort to win the youth of America and the world. Hundreds of websites and blogs on the internet seek to convince and convert adolescents, endeavoring to remove any residue of theism from their minds and hearts by packaging atheism as the choice of the new generation. While you think your kids are innocently surfing the web, secular progressives are intentionally preying on the naive and the innocent. What's preposterous is that atheists are now advertising and soliciting on websites particularly created for teens. If atheism was simply like they said, just a lack of belief, then they wouldn't need to go to all this trouble. It's clear that they have a belief and they want to spread it to others. Think about this. When you start up a Facebook page or any social media, oftentimes they will ask you for your religion. Your options are Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Catholic, Atheist, or other, or none. Why would they have two options of the same thing if atheism really is no belief at all? It's obvious. Belief determines behavior. Also, belief leads to action. And we know for a fact that atheists are far more action-driven in their pro-choice, school shootings, liberalism, riots, gender equality, and overall hate for God which they swear they don't believe is real. Do you see the insanity yet? Another hallmark of an actual belief or claim is that it has entailments, consequences that flow out from holding or stating it. Kind of like the Columbine shooters. Perfect example. Aaron Raw is the perfect example of somebody who embodies the definition of a religious atheist, by the way. Reference the definition of blessing from the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary and you find become a believer, an atheist, an agnostic, a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, etc. It mentions a believer and then lists atheist. Why? Because it defines it as a system, the belief in a human constructed system, such as what atheism is, and it requires belief, devotion, and dedication. Aaron Raw, for example, is very devoted, very active, and participatory in his belief system. His goal is to spread atheism as much as possible, saturate the internet, go anywhere, travel anywhere, talk to anybody, any means necessary, and he says that he knows God does not exist, something that no one can know. That is how insane he is. Does atheism attract believers to it? You're right, it sure does. It's easy to see. Most atheists believe in naturalism, the worldview that says that only material things exist, even though quantum physics has outright falsified materialism, but nevertheless, they hold on to this belief system. Many of them believe in scientism as well. They view that science can answer any and all questions about both the natural world and the human condition. The list goes on and on. Many people self-described as atheists or who call themselves atheists are proudly writing atheist or free thinker on their social media profiles with a Darwin fish eating the Jesus fish, or the more zealous enthusiastic change their profile picture to little icons of flying spaghetti 
three monsters. Furthermore, atheists show the tendency to gather in groups and communities centered around atheism. For example, Facebook groups, YouTube, blog, and there's plenty more. Also, they hang out online at places like richarddawkins.net in order to slander believers that aren't even there and remind one another how cool it is to be an atheist. They attend conferences and seminars. There's a huge meetup called the World Atheist Conference in Dublin. They subscribe to atheist gurus to hear them bicker and complain about creationists. They buy books written by atheists like Christopher Hitchens or Sam Harris. It's sort of worshipping by getting these books signed by Harris and Dawkins, etc. They have their creed and accuse those who disagree with them as heresy. You can go to my friend's YouTube channel, The Eternal Life Fan Club, whose name is Rowan, and he has converted to being a Christian from an atheist, and all the comments in the atheist chat section are like, you'll be back. You'll be back to what? You'll be back to their religion. That's what they're talking about. They want you back, and they need you back. Their numbers are small. Atheists now have churches going up, so they don't even have to begin to try and say they're not a religion anymore. A group of atheists have also launched the Sunday service. 400 atheist churches launched. This is a long time ago that this happened. There's so many more atheist churches going up, it's insane. Atheists look like a belief, function like a belief, behave like a belief. In short, it is a belief. They can tell you whatever they want, but when you can look out the window and see it, it's obvious. In the article from the Atlantic Globe, they state that Americans are deeply religious people and atheists are no exception. So atheist, since the Supreme Court considers atheism a religion, atheist churches are popping up worldwide, the general public noticed that atheism is a religion, and that decades of all credible and widely used dictionaries say that atheism is a belief, then it is proof positive that your personal beliefs about the subject is worthless, and your shield of, it's just a lack of belief, is nothing but a cowardly defensive lie. There is no need for theists to argue anymore. Atheism is proven to be a religion by atheists themselves. Thank you. Another problem is that the statement, atheism is just a non-belief in God, is it's not logical. What do I mean? Well, on this definition, my cat is an atheist because it doesn't believe in God. When I have pointed this out to other atheists, they reply, but a cat can't believe in anything. To which I reply, so now you're saying that atheism is the lack of belief in God by a creature that has the ability to form beliefs? That's an entirely different claim altogether. The atheist now claiming to believe that the external world really exists, thus they are rejecting metaphysical idealism. That other minds exist, that the human mind can form beliefs, and that our cognitive faculties are broadly reliable. Suddenly, what looked like a simple statement of non-belief, or I don't believe in God, has sprouted a whole series of positive claims. I have not yet encountered an atheist who believes that positive claims do not need to be argued for. Indeed, atheists are fond of crying for evidence whenever confronted with a religious believer, and so it is the atheist's job to give evidence for each of the philosophical positions they are encamped upon. If they are not willing to do the hard reasoning, well then, they can take their place alongside the cat. Atheism is self-refuting, because atheists cannot subscribe to a lack of belief while making a knowledge claim about evidence. Atheism, therefore, is false for being contradictory. Atheism is nothing more than a temper tantrum thrown at God. You still think you're not religious? Do you know how I know for a fact that you are religious? Look at how you defend it. Look at how you argue for it and debate about it. Do you do this over math or English or history or cooking or anything? Do you get mad at fad diets that misrepresent their opinions? No. Do you fly off the handle at people like in the media who constantly make shit up or go and spam their channels with hate and threats? No, of course not. Just God, specifically Christianity. I actually wanted to see, and I went for myself to different Buddhist channels and Islam channels and other religious channels, and I've never found any spam or threats or worthless shit in their comment section. Just ours. It's amazing. Come on, atheist. Let's get real. Who has to label themselves by what they don't believe in? Who has to go around vehemently attacking people who think differently than they do? The whole atheist game is a ruse and we know it. The atheists spend all of their time and energy trying to convince people and others what he doesn't believe. What kind of sense does this make? They make it their purpose in life to tell others that there is no purpose in life. 
Arn Raw and Apologia and Matt Dillahunt, they all go to churches, events like the Ark Encounter, online Christian channels, and debate Christians in an attempt that they can even get one more person from that audience as an atheist. What do they get out of this? Nothing but personal satisfaction because they have a chip on their shoulder against God, trying to turn onlookers of atheists with their rhetoric. This is not a secret, it's blatantly obvious. Hostility, immaturity, and impatience, when combined with emotional inconsistencies, are a telltale signs of a god-hater. Theists aren't imbeciles. If something does not exist, it's not worth being mentally unhinged over. Unfortunately, atheists, like the village idiot, do exist. This is why most creationists hide their identity. Because atheists are pure psychopaths. Devon Tracy from Atheism is Unstoppable has put countless theists on blast who have had his atheist fans attack these people because he asked them to. They have hacked bank accounts and made death threats to many people. I personally had to create another YouTube channel because my health channel became bombarded with angry and upset atheists who came over and found my health channel which was full of happy people and interested in helping getting over their sickness. But now it's a disaster and I have to block all comments because of these tirades of hate that they spew onto the channel. This is one of my favorites right here. If atheism is a religion, then not collecting stamps is a hobby. Actually, no. Non-stamp collectors don't go around pathologically upset and crying at stamp collectors, talking to their buddies about not collecting stamps, or mad at stamps for existing all day long. Nor do non-stamp collectors have a label for their non-stamp collecting buddies. I found this on Facebook. This is not an anti-theist group. These are just atheists. Hypothetical question. If it were revealed tomorrow, and there were irrefutable proof of the existence of God, not only that, but it was the Christian God. Would you believe or change anything about the way you live your life? Look at these replies. Evolution is the fundamental idea in biology. So you're not going to have a next generation of physicians or people to research vaccines without an understanding of evolution. He brings up evolution theory when he meant to bring up cell theory. He doesn't even know the difference. Do you want to know what evolution theory is actually brought to medicine? The removal of the gallbladder, thinking that it was worthless and harmful to have. The removal of these vital organs that actually serve a purpose and they're not vestigial remnants left over. So, let me be clear. Evolutionary theory has caused the death and suffering of an innumerable amount of people. When evolution indoctrinated scientists failed to discover the purpose for which the appendix was created, for example, their indoctrination led them to illogically conclude that it had little to no physiological function, that it was just an evolutionary leftover, a vestigial organ. Thus began the unnecessary removal of hundreds of thousands if not millions of people's appendixes as they spread this evolutionary concept to doctors. Now we've learned the valuable immunological role of the appendix. Little did they know back then that it was a backup immune system which produces killer B cells, like the thyroid produces killer T cells. It also plays a replenishing healthy gut bacteria role after sickness, especially after diarrhea. But how many people suffered infections, chronic health problems, and death from compromised immune systems due to this loss of bacteria vital to our body's defense system, all because of evolutionary dogma? We will never truly know the negative impact but the numbers are off the charts. Evolution causes far more harm than good. So, Bill Nye, the science guy, you're obviously not the science guy you claim to be because you don't even have the basic understanding of the difference of theories. First of all, no, it's cell theory. That is the bedrock of biology. Emergence is the universal theme of biology. Evolution is just an extension of that. Just like how any field would branch out, some become dilapidated, useless twigs whose development doesn't benefit anyone. The bedrock of medicine is the germ theory of disease, which is an extension of cell theory, not evolution theory. It is an understanding of the methods of treatment of disease. 
with a fluid understanding of pathophysiology, anatomy, and internal medicine. This is my specialty, and I write books on it. You have either such a lack of understanding in this area, or you're completely lying about it. You will never see a patient get cured by understanding that they're an ape, or related to a chimpanzee, or whatever you want to scrounge up in the fossil record and say we're related to. That nonsense doesn't belong in biology, where actual, observable, testable evidence matters. Just like how it's a doctor's job to treat a patient, it's a biologist's job to use his understanding of cellular life to somehow benefit humanity. What does evolutionary theory have to do with this? Nothing. What does a fossil benefit? How does a society further improve by continuously digging up useless fossils and putting them in museums? When a patient is dying, what are you going to do? Shovel interpretational evidence down their throat? Understanding evolution is only relevant in a few niche fields, and it really just boils down to an understanding of the applicable mechanisms of Mendelian genetics, which was discovered before evolution ever became popularized. Antibiotic resistance takes a paragraph for me to explain, and doesn't require a course in phylogenetics. Are these objectable true facts? Yes. But you don't seem to care. You just care that evolution is true, because you need it to be true. Your job and income rely on it. The concept of evolutionary theory in the minds of children is destructive. It causes more kids to become atheists than any other theory on Earth. And atheists lead the world in depression, medication intake, suicide, and school shootings. Good job, Bill Nye. Can you repeat it? I'm sorry. They said, if Darwin's title of the origin of species is, is it racist? Yeah, of course it's racist. Gotcha.
an atheist, what finally made me into an atheist was the realization that came with the understanding of Darwinian evolution. Nobody's going to go and kill for the sake of atheism. Why on earth would you? Right. Yeah. The indoctrination of evolutionism has directly led to the rise of violence, STDs, more drug use, and suicide. If that's not bad enough, the atheist that evolution theory created has brought with it mass school shootings. No such thing prior ever existed. 99% of all school shootings in history are atheist. And the majority of these atheists directly target Christians. Now, let's keep it simple. Let's look at mass school shootings only. 30 out of the 31 last Rampage school massacres since Columbine have had strong anti-religious beliefs. Only one non-atheist made the list, and it was an Islamic kid whose mom told him to do it for jihad. That's right, 30 out of 31 of these mass shooters are atheist. Considering atheists only make up 3-5% to of the United States population where most of these occur, and 7% of the world's population, either way you look at it, 30 out of 31, that is 97%. This is conclusive evidence of correlation that far exceeds statistical probability. That is undeniable proof of a positive correlation between school massacres and atheism, proving atheism is pure cancer to human beings and life itself. You can try to blame or link mental issues, race, gender, medications, video games, or whatever you want for a rescuing device, but none of those criteria match everyone down the line. Yet the fact remains, they were all atheists. There is no logical pathway that would lead you from atheism to do those terrible things. Right. Even the most rigid atheist of all, Richard Dawkins, admits that there are no Christians, as far as he knows, blowing up buildings, being suicide bombers, or when you leave the church, the penalty is death. You see, even he recognizes Christianity isn't the problem, but atheism is. To an atheist, what finally made me into an atheist was the realization that, that came with the understanding of Darwinian evolution. The theory of evolution is protected by law. They need to keep evolution in the science classroom and creationism out. It is the only way to indoctrinate the next generation. Look at the absolute hate and craziness that these people post at me and towards other Christians. It's insane. Absolute bullshit, complete and thorough, come absolute bullshit written by people who had no idea what they're talking about.